Philadelphia and Dallas, two cities that have no love for one another. Whether it's between the lines or an ace leaving Texas to return to the city that loved him back, now the tension shifts to the ice. The Flyers welcome a Dallas squad that is still seeing stars from this past Thursday. Here's Carter moving in the shot, he scores! It's a battle of division leader, the best in the Atlantic against the class of the Pacific. Billy Leno digging away at the rebound! Speaking of the best, we have the greatest flyer of them all. Bob Clark back in studio to break it all down. The puck drops on Flyers post-game live now. Leno turns back and he scores! Well, there are very few keepsakes, if any, that are coming out of the spectrum these days, especially after Thursday's ceremony right here on home ice. As Bob Clark was presented with his number 16 banner that hung from the rafters just across the street. And with that, hello and welcome once again right here to Flyers pregame live presented by Drexel University's LeBeau College of Business. I'm John Bork. My wingman from the wing bowl, Al Morgani, and if you're going to have a wingman, well, you need a center, and I think we've got one of the very best. And Bob Clark, who joins us once again, you were here on Tuesday, very gracious enough to uh, be back here on a Saturday night. Well, tonight, the Flyers face a Dallas Stars team that literally had their noses rearranged last time out. That was uh, up in Boston on Thursday, not to mention other parts of their faces, which we'll get into. But you have to think, Bob, first off, they're going to come in here, and they're going to want to get their fingernails dirty. They're going to battle. They're an attack hockey team, and they're going to come in physically right off the bat, and the Flyers better be ready. What I liked about that game from a Dallas standpoint in Boston was they got hammered, as we're going to see here. They just got hammered in the first couple of shifts of the game, fell way behind, and then came back. Despite getting physically beaten and then beaten on the scoreboard, they had the wherewithal to say, you know what, we're not going to, we, we've got some sandpaper here, we're coming back in it. Well, not only that, but they were embarrassed on the scoreboard, 6 3, but you see some of these fights that took place. Adam Burris was part of that. He suffered a fractured orbital bone. Uh, Chris Bartz is, has a scratched cornea. All these as parts of the fight. I mean, they're embarrassed coming in here. Well, they, but, but, but they did come back in it. So when you want to say they're best, there was some bad blood between what had happened a couple of seasons earlier there, and, and Boston's had some stuff at home. But I think what really is going to hurt, you mentioned the injuries. They had an energy. They, they've had trouble finding a third line, and Burrs kind of, they, they had something going there, and I think the Flyers' depth will kind of take over in this one. Yeah, and, and they're not going to be embarrassed, John. They're going to be angry, probably at their own performance, uh, not so much losing a fight. That can happen to anybody, but... They initiated the stuff and then got beat at it and then got beat in the game. And they've lost four or five. They're going to come after the Flyers tonight. They've, and the Flyers better be ready at the start of the game. And they better be ready for physical play. All right, Bob. So if you're Peter Laviolette, how does this uh, affect your lineup coming into this game? Uh, knowing what we saw from that, ga uh, that Dallas game Thursday, do you take uh, uh, countermeasures ag against the Stars tonight? No, absolutely not. Nothing has to change. The Flyers got guys who like that kind of hockey. Yep. This is right up Mike Richards' alley, right up Chris Pronger's alley. This is the kind of game that I think these guys love playing. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it, um, I don't know what the lineup, uh, who, who will get the nod, who will who end up sitting out, but it, it, sometimes a game like that will bring out even better from the Flyers. Uh, I don't know if they need a real heavyweight in this one against this team at this point, but it will. It gets you into it quicker. That's the risk you run, and Dallas ran that risk in Boston. If they want to do that on the road, the risk you run is to say, okay, you chose the weapon, we'll come at you with it. And it's tougher. To, if it happens again, it's tougher for them the second time around doing this. Oh, and there was a good subplot going into this game, the Adam Burrish, Chris Pronger, where Burrish called him an idiot and said, you know, he wants to punch him and all that good you Juicy stuff, and then what? Burrishes are going to be deactivated on injured reserve for this game. <laughs> Darn! Yeah, well, everybody looking forward to it. I was. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was kind of upset. I, I don't think Burrish was going to get that close to Chris Pronger. <laughs> no, Chris Pronger too much. Well, he gave me the best line when I said, "What do you think of that, that next time you meet?" He goes, "Where's that going to be? The minors?" <laughs> that, that was the best line I thought between those two guys. All right, let's move on. Our Wells Fargo keys to the game. Mr. Clark had some perfect ones uh, against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Unfortunately, the Flyers didn't hold up their end of the bargain. So what do you got tonight? I'm saying the same thing. They got to be ready at the start. Dallas is an attack team and they got to be ready to play physical. 
And they re it's going to be physical. It is going to be real physical from the start. So I do I agree with that, that they really have to be ready to come right in, ready to go, because Dallas doesn't want this to slip any further. Crow, uh, Cropper's not going to want his team to be able to skip a gear, if you will. Okay, and Alex, you got uh, stretched the Dallas defense. Yeah, and by this, I mean, they, they play much like the Flyers. When things are going good, they're a cycle team. And I think if you can separate their defensemen from their forwards, don't let them set up for that cycle. Don't let them get in that position. Break it and break out of the zone with a quick outlet pass. And I love Pronger. I'm, I mean, this, this is a great matchup for me. I, I'm not, and who knows what the coach will say, what defensive pair will be on, but I like that Pronger Morrow matchup. Well, it's interesting. This is the first of two matchups they will play in Dallas uh, in March. So who knows? Whatever happens here could set the tone for that game come next month. All right, our goalies tonight for the Flyers, it'll be Brian Boucher. He came in relief in that uh, game against the Lightning tonight. He will start. And for the Dallas Stars, and you know, he may, he's really had a revival here, Bob. Kari Leighton coming from Atlanta and playing for the Stars, and he's going to be in that tonight for Dallas. Leighton was the highest rated goalie coming out for years. I think if I, a lot of teams had him rated higher than Fleury or DPF or any of those guys, and he went third to Atlanta and, and really struggled. Um, it was a year that we had the fourth pick and got Yanni Pitkin, in, and, and we were, we had Leighton rated right there, and, and I didn't want to take a goalie. Right, so yeah. it worked out good for us, but uh, this kid is good. And you wound up taking Yoni Pickenden, the draft that uh, Atlanta took Kari Lettinen. And uh, Lettinen, I don't believe, has ever beaten the Flyers, yeah, Al. with Atlanta, and they had the matchup, the Finn matchup, uh, Every, not yeah. good. And I, I mean, when I look at Boucher, I, I look at this as a real study in what it's like to be a backup goalie or not, not the prime guy all the time. Every game you go out, it's like, you know what, you're earning a job. And for Boucher, I really think every game is so important for him when he plays. All right, well, offensively, Claude Giroux has points in eight of his last nine games. He has a plus 11 rating in that span as well. The Flyers' leading score is ringside with our Lisa Hillary. Thanks very much, John. Claude, you guys, uh, unlike the Dallas Stars, have avoided losing two games in a row for about six weeks now. What do you attribute that to? Uh, I think good teams find a way to, uh, to show up every, every game, and when you do that, you, uh, you're obviously uh, going to win more games. And, uh, compared to last year, I think we uh, we found a way to do that. This is the time of year when we start seeing the playoff type atmospheres. Do you expect to see that tonight, especially against the Dallas Stars team, given where they are and how that division is so tight right now? Yeah, they're obviously a pretty good team, and uh, they're pretty high in the West, so uh, it's going to be a pretty good test for us, and uh, they obviously have uh, some pretty good players on the other side, so uh, uh, it's going to be a pretty good game. Thanks for the time. Good luck tonight. Thanks. All right, Johnny B, back upstairs to you. All right, thanks a lot, Lisa. We talked about Claude Giroux back on Tuesday, but it's a luxury that I think 29 other coaches would love to have that Peter Laviolette has, and that is you really have four centers, and we're starting to see some real chemistry develop between Claude Giroux and Jeff Carter, with Carter playing wing now. They complement each other. Giroux can hang on to the puck and move real quickly and s sneak around and stuff, and Carter's a big, strong guy who can skate like heck and shoot like heck and, and gets into the clear and Giroux can give him the puck. And yeah, nobody's got the center depth whenever you try to match up. It's why on the road they're so hard to match against when they can throw so many centermen out there. And it's, this league's become a league where if you're not driven by the guy in the middle, you know, you've got some problems. The wingers aren't going to carry it anymore. To, 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 you've got to have depth right there in the middle well, of the ice. We've seen Laviolette switch him back and forth. Do you think this is, this is the way he should go with Giroux in the middle as opposed to Carter? I think he can do whatever he yeah. wants with those guys. but. He's also got a player like Leno who can really handle a puck and make good plays and stuff. The Flyers have numerous really clever players, and so many teams that come in here that play so good have to play real tight defensive hockey because they don't have clever players in the offensive zone. Flyers got a half a dozen of them could make great plays in the offensive zone, and they're really hard to find. Yep, absolutely. All right, we are just getting warmed up right here on Flyers Pregame Live. When we return, well, two things Billy Leno doesn't have. A nickname and a contract after this season. Well, how about Slick Billy? And how much do the Flyers need him past this season? We'll try to answer that. And the Pens suffer another blow to one of their superstars. How is that going to affect their chances down the stretch? Flyers Pregame Live presented by Drexel LeBeau College of Business. We'll return right after this. Our quick hits, and the one that Yevgeny Malkin sustained was quick and very damaging. The Penn Center is expected to miss the remainder of the season after tearing both his ACL and his MCL, colliding with Sabres defenseman Tyler Myers. Surgery is a possibility, but say this about the Pittsburgh Penguins. They have played well in the absence of both Sidney Crosby 
and Evgeny Malkin. Now they're going to have to obviously play without Malkin for what appears to be the rest of this year. As you look at the Eastern Conference standings, and really, <laughs> it's hard to believe when you think about it, the Pittsburgh Penguins just a point behind the Flyers in the standings. They've had, obviously, major injuries, but that's why they're a good team. They're a team. You, you can take anybody off a team if it's a good team, and the team will continue to win. Al, i, I got to ask you, does it make it somewhat difficult, too, when you take two superstars, and who do you focus on? I know it really hurts them down the middle, but still. Oh, and they lost to uh, they got another sentiment. Uh, let, let's test to. Uh, so yeah, they're the rookie. really hurting. And, I mean, you don't want to look ahead that far, but that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> look way ahead. Um, you, it's a big deal to me that the Flyers win the division and, and maybe avoid a match with Tampa and then having to play Pittsburgh later. I, I think this is, you don't want to see players get hurt, but I think the Flyers would benefit. I don't think the Pittsburgh can continue the pace they are with, with these, these injuries eventually catch you. Okay, we're going to uh, put in a nice little unique segment here. What do we got? Uh, it's called Two in the Box. You know, Bob Clark's already feels like this is punishment answering some of our questions. So here we go. With two minutes, we're going to try to get in as many questions as we can in two minutes while Bob Clark is in the box. All right, question number one. What team is the biggest threat to the Flyers in the East? And maybe uh, interesting now that Malkin's out. I believe early Tampa Bay. And if, it, it, if the playoffs extend and Boston gets Savard back, they're going to be awful tough. All right, Al. All right, you said you wouldn't mind number 16 coming down from the rafters and somebody having to wear it. Who would you like to wear number 16 and why? Well, anybody could wear it, Al. I don't think it diminishes any accomplishments I had by allowing someone else to wear it. I, I know there's been players, Drew, Richard, some of these guys who have been compared to the way I played, and I don't know how I played, but <laughs> let the, you know, if they want one of those guys, I, I would be happy to to wear it, have someone wear it. All right. Will the Flyers make a trade before the deadline? Well, I believe Paul Holmgren will do something, but I don't believe he'll take anybody off the club. I think he'll try and add with draft picks or something, but he'll keep his club. All right. I covered you as a player and a general manager for about 20 years, 15 <laughs> years. How many times did you tell me the absolute truth? None, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you learn talking to you guys is to say nothing. And if you have to say something, you lie. <laughs> Past or present, best captain in the NHL? Oh, that's a good one. Stevie Eiserman probably would be the, uh, the top of the list, I think. Mark Messier. Okay. Present, Mike Richards. All right. The toughest job uh, moving to the front office as a general manager, right? You went right away. What's the toughest part about being a general manager? I, I think negotiating a contract is the toughest thing you do. You, you, you've got money in your hand that belongs to an owner that you work for, and you've got to look after that. And you've got a player who you want to play for you and play good for you. And you've got to try and figure out how you balance those, those things. And it, it's... If you've got no experience, it's tough. All right. Last question, though. Uh, ever, well, think, ever think you'd play left wing on my line? <laughs> no, I, I, I usually had better wingers out there. I'll no, tell no, you. That is definitely for sure. Okay. That is two in the box. Bob Clark got some good questions in there and some good answers as well. All right. Uh, kick, uh, keeping it uh, back to the Flyers in tonight's game. Billy Leno, as we saw back on Thursday, had two goals, his first two-goal game, including the game winner, and the improvements are coming at both ends. In fact, I thought it was very interesting, Bob, that uh, Peter Laviolette said, you know, he's so smooth with the puck that I'd almost like to see him with a turnover every now and then. I love Leno. I love watching him play, and he's a real compliment to Breer and to Hartnell, but they are also a compliment to him. He's a player who's going to have to have the right players to play with, so he can be successful, and he's found them here. And he's helped those guys immensely, and they've helped him immensely. It's a great trio. I'm still astonished when, because, you know, you watch Detroit, and they're a hardworking team with hardworking, and I'm amazed that he kind of slipped through there. I know the roster situation and money, but I look at him and go, boy, wouldn't that have been a guy that you would think would come through with Detroit? Well, you'd almost think anybody can play in Detroit. <laughs> but, but Billy's a special type of player. There's not many players like him. He, you know, he doesn't have great speed. And it's not like he's knocking guys on the rear end and stuff, but he gets the puck and he slides around and he slips it through people's feet and he does all these things. And if you get in the clear, he gets you the puck. Not many winners like that. I want to hear from Billy. This is Billy Lano talking about the success that he's had recently. Well, yeah, I want to pat myself a little bit on the back. I, um, I'm proud of it. I'm, I, I think I've been, been uh, developing as a defensive uh, player, so uh, I, I want to do it and I keep going. 
I guess we've been scoring a lot and uh, we've been playing good defensively. Everybody's been counterable, so um, you, that's where you are and you got to keep going. Otherwise, otherwise you won't be there. All right, so Vili Leno, and I think you hit the nail on the head in signing this guy, the importance that he brings to that line, really for Danny Breer and for Scott Hartnell, because they've struggled to find guys to compliment them as well. So And, we'll, Le and Leno struggled yeah. without those two. So, right. it's, uh, it's I mean, it's a perfect, perfect trio. Absolutely. All right, plenty more to come here on Pregame Live, presented by Drexel's LeBeau College of Business. Bob Clark will give his thoughts on Thursday's night out, the ceremony. Plus, we'll have your questions to the Hall of Famer in our quick hits. That's all coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, a man that is as much a Philadelphia Flyer as the emblem worn on the crest of each jersey. Please rise and welcome to the ice, number 16, Bob Clark. And that was the scene on Thursday as uh, Bob Clark received that number 16 banner that hung from the rafters at the Spectrum for 20 plus years uh, and, and I, you know a lot of fans were expecting you to say something but mm -hmm. that really wasn't the occasion what I thought was special for you was having your grandson there and I know you were talking to him tell, tell me sort of uh, the night for you and having him beside you well I, I'm not comfortable going out and doing these kind of things and uh, <laughs> but having him there that's a once in a lifetime shot to have your grandson on the ice with you I don't expect I'll ever be back out on the ice again. Uh, maybe he will someday be a player. Who knows? But it, for me, that was uh, just having him there. We're, we're pretty close, the two of us. So you're, you're you're special of, to me, that boy. You were hitting him on the shoulder. You said a few words. What, what were you trying to do? Cause, could you, could, did you sense that he was nervous at all? I think he was a little nervous. He doesn't show it very much. But I said to him, see what happens when you get old? They just keep dragging you out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I cover the guy with sticking his stick through guy's eyes, and now it's all warm and fuzzy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm all confused. <laughs> As you get older, don't you get that warm and fuzzy don't feeling? Don't ask me. I'm not no. older. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's take some uh, questions from the fans. It's our AT&T Slap Shots. Our first one from a guy named Brad. And Brad wants to know, why do teams drop the gloves right off the bat, the opening fa face off? especially in that game where the Stars and the, and the Boston Bruins, they had three fights in the first four seconds. My only guess is the Bruin, or I'm sorry, Dallas's player must have thought he was going to inspire his teammates by starting a fight. I, I, it wasn't Bruins initiating. It was Dallas, and Dallas had lost three out of four or something. So that would be my only guess. All right, and question number two, Christine. Can the Flyers win the Cup as is? And we're, we're assuming with the roster the way it is right now. Um, I think so. I think there'll be a chance. I mean, everybody at the trade deadline, sometimes I think just to get energy or they, something gets done so the locker room gets energized a little bit. But I think they're, all the components are there. The depth is awesome. And the defensive depth is it's unbelievable how much they've improved over just the one year by that f uh, five and six spots on defense. They really do have the depth to do it all. That was almost priority number one for Paul yes. Holmgren. I do want to ask you, because you were general manager when Brian Boucher in his very first stand, how much has he grown? What have you seen differently about Brian Boucher this time around? I love Brian Boucher, and what he has done, in my opinion, and I never talked to him about it, is he has become a goaltender who plays strictly for the team. He's not competing to be number one. He's not competing with Bob. He wasn't competing with Leighton. When you ask him to play, he plays. When at practice, he works every day. He's the perfect goaltender now for me. He can go in any time and do a really good job without, he's not trying to compete with the other goaltender. And we really saw that last season when it was Ray Emery and, yeah. and Michael Layton come in and he said all the right things and did all exactly what a coach would want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He's yeah. been terrific. And he's in that tonight against Kari Lentinen who's on the other side for uh, the Dallas Stars. All right. Still to come here on Flyers pregame live presented by Drexel Lebeau College of Business. We'll let you know who to keep your eye out on tonight when we reveal our standout stars. Plus Bobby Clark has an interesting I guess we could say uh, a connection to one of the Super Bowl franchises. We'll tell you what exactly that is when we come back. All right, time to uh, dip into our standout stars brought to you by GMC. We all pick one guy who we think is going to perform admirably. I like Danny Breer. You like uh, the, the big, big nasty. Guy, I like that. I think a nasty game like this, I really like him. And that was, I think, uh, part of Bob's uh, decision. The same 
Yeah, I, I pick Richards, and uh, I think this is a type of game that he stands out in. Mike Richards, yep. Uh, in fact, I think when the Flyers score, when Mike Richards scores a goal, I, I don't think the Flyers have lost when he has actually scored a goal in a game so far this season. We'll see if that holds up tonight. Uh, a couple of scratches we can tell you about. Jody Shelley, who has practiced, he had some flu-like symptoms. He's practicing. He won't be playing tonight. He's been scratched. Oscar Bartulis is a scratch as well. Well, Super Bowl 45, the big game tomorrow. The Pittsburgh Steelers, Green Bay Packers down in Dallas. Uh, you'll be watching it. I, I don't know how much of a fan you are of football, but tell me, uh, you have a prediction for tomorrow's game? I'm an Eagles season ticket holder, yeah, and I like the pack tomorrow. You like the pack? Yeah. Good game, close? Close game, close game. Close Roethlisberger's game. obviously pretty good. He'll keep Pittsburgh in it. All right. I like Palomalo. I just oh. like watching him play. <laughs> so it looks like a hockey player to me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with them. I'm just on the base and banging people around. Well, back in the 70s, when yeah. obviously the Broad Street Bullies were uh, in effect, uh, Pittsburgh had a pretty good football team back then. They won four Super Bowls in a six-year span. You guys won two Stanley Cups. And we also found another similarity during that period. So here's Bob Clark. And then there's Jack Lambert, maybe the two most imposing and, and good-looking guys without their two front teeth. What do you think, Al? Uh, I think they both should have helmets on. Well, the guy on the left may have been a little bit tougher because he actually played without a helmet at one time. That is uh, for oh, most of his Lord. career. Lambert was awful tough, and when we used to go into Pittsburgh, he was quoted lots of times in the papers how much he liked watching the Flyers. It probably played up to his persona. I mean, that was the type of player he was. He wrestled guys to the ground, and he was a fierce warrior. And uh, it's always been a blast with Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, from the, yeah. from the arena, the igloo. That you go in, it's the same kind of a fan base. It's just been they don't. There's grudging respect on either side, and it gets real like defensive football and real hard hitting hockey. We talked about real quickly, uh, you know, the power play. That that too, they got a goal. Flyers have been perfect almost when they get a power play goal. And James Van Riemsdyk, for about 45 seconds, was playing the point. I mean, how much of that will we see? And, hey, maybe that's something that the Flyers, they want to experiment with that, with that 100-mile-an-hour slap shot? With the defense they have that are so good offensively, Pronger and uh, Mezzaros and uh, Finn there, they, they don't really need him no. back there. But why not? He played it in, uh, in college, so I don't think it hurts to give him a shot to see what what he can do. It was a nice little experiment that we saw Thursday against mm -hmm. the Nashville Predators. Well, Bob and Al and myself, we're all going to be with you throughout the intermissions. Enjoy the game, everyone. Flyers and Stars coming your way next. Flyers pregame live presented by LeBeau College of Business at Drexel University. Visit LeBeau.Drexel.edu. Drexel's LeBeau College. Learn here. Leave